Loren says, my best learn moment was the day I discovered how to use the curve tool and the magic of blend if. Aaron says, thanks to you, I was able to release my very first coffee table book. I had to give Aaron and Flern credit at the end of the book. Thanks, man. Nicolina says, your episodes give me ideas, make me want to experiment and be more creative. I can see an improvement in my art. You're awesome. No, you're awesome. Melanie says, I love the weekend inspiration posts. They've given me so many ideas and encouraged me to do crazy things or not so normal things. Reem says, when I first came upon Flern, I was in a bad place in my life. Photography was the way of getting myself together. It was early on when Flern was just Aaron in his living room. I loved his way of explaining things and I became a devoted family member. I made so many friends because of Flern. I also met my boyfriend because of Flern. To sum this up, Flern is my family. That's awesome. Hey guys and welcome to Flern. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on flern.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. This week is special because it is fan Appreciation Week, and we're gonna start off this week with an awesome, uh, just kind of announcement. We got our plaque in the mail from YouTube. This is congratulations for surpassing 100,000 subscribers. We got a fancy little plaque here, which is super excited. We're putting it on the wall here at Flern, and uh, this is all thanks to you guys. So thank you so much to our wonderful YouTube audience. This whole week is dedicated to you. We're creating awesome episodes based on your suggestions on your images. Today's episode is brought to you by Clayton Powers. Today we're taking Clayton's image and we're going to be taking a different picture of a sky and merging them together. This is an amazing episode. It's gonna show you guys how to add sky detail in any of your images where the sky is blown out. So here's our image by Clayton. It's really, really cool. You did an awesome job editing this grass in the foreground, adding that purple color is really, Cool, and the birds in the background and kind of are holding a birdcage. I think it, on many different levels, this image totally works. And I was thinking it might be cool if we added some detail into the sky. And I'm sure you guys have taken photos where like, it's just like this and the sky, you know, it just doesn't have any detail and it's almost pure white. And that's basically a limitation of our cameras not being able to capture the full dynamic range of like all the lights and the midtones and the darks, but you can do it in Photoshop. So today I'm gonna show you guys, we're gonna actually bring in three different skies and I'm gonna show you some of the things you should look for when adding a sky and adding detail into an image because not every sky is going to work. So let's go ahead and bring in our three skies and these are actually from our Amazing Skies texture pack on flurn.com, which uh, we'll link to it on the screen so you guys can check that out. Okay, so bringing these in, basically let's just go ahead and stretch these out We've got three different skies here. Some of these are gonna work better than others. And we're gonna just gonna kind of talk about basically what we need to look for in an image before adding our sky. So the first thing that I'm looking at with this image is like, okay, where is like the sun in this image? Do we have like a, a bright sun here that's like, you know, giving like a really nice light on our subject? Or is it just kind of like a general overall, like a little bit more of a, not a cloudy day, but just a, like the, the light is nice and diffused. And in this case, it's more of a diffused light. You can see the light everywhere is pretty soft. We're not dealing with like hard light, right? The other thing we're looking at is what's the time of day here? Is this like early in the morning or late at night? Would the sun be here on the horizon or would it be here or would it be, you know, directly above? And in this case, it's a little bit higher in the sky as well. So that really dictates we don't need an image that's like a sunrise image, right? If you use a sky that's like a sunrise or a sunset sky, it's not gonna work because the lighting from the sky has to match the lighting from the image because skies actually light the land, right? So we don't kind of have to make sure you're keeping in mind the time of day and don't choose an image where the skies or the sun is in the totally wrong place. Okay, the other thing we're looking at is about like where the horizon is in this photo. Like, you know, like let's say the mountains and stuff like weren't there. That's about where the horizon would be. So if you're going out and you take a picture of a sky and you point the camera straight up, the sky is gonna look a lot different pointing straight up than it is going out towards the horizon. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Make sure the orientation of the sky is pretty similar to what's going on here in the photo. All right, so let's just go through a couple examples and we can kind of show you guys what we're talking about. So here are our different skies. This is one of those examples where the sun, where the, we're kind of like looking a little bit more up. I'll just show you guys kind of how to analyze this. 
I can see already that we can't see any of the horizon in this picture of a sky. So we're looking a little bit farther up, right? The other thing is we can definitely see a difference. See all that highlight right there on the shadow? Sorry, highlight on the cloud and then shadow on the cloud there? That means that the sun is coming from the left side there. So it's actually lighting things up. And um, that's, that's one thing to look at because in our base image, that's not really what's happening with the sun. All right, our next sky, this is like a sunset sky. And I can't even see the sun. We've got these really nice colors in here. And I like the idea of these colors working for us in this image, but I don't think that this sky was, is going to work for us because it's a sunset sky and this image we decided wasn't taken at sunset. All right, and then we've got this sky, which is a little bit more plain, but this actually might be perfect. It can add detail. We can get a little bit of like light wisps, the clouds and things like that. It's just a, it's a general broad blue. So it, it would be believable that this would actually be lighting our image. Cause it's not like you don't see the sun like really, really bright and then like dark clouds. It's just kind of like a bright wispy day. So I'm gonna show you guys the kind of the difference between these and how to actually get these images uh, to work for us. Okay, let's go ahead and start with this guy. I'm gonna lower the transparency a little bit so I can kind of see what we're doing here. We're gonna add a layer mask onto this and then I'm gonna hit G for the gradient mask and we're gonna paint in our foreground to transparent, black until transparent. So this is basically, I'm gonna hold down shift and go from the bottom up just like that. Now this is the easiest way. There are a lot of ways to add skies to images in Photoshop. What I've found is if you keep the horizon relatively similar, like this area between the tree line and stuff like that, if you keep that pretty much from the original image and just add detail back to the top, it's gonna work out a lot of the time. So Really, I don't mind, and I've, I've seen this done many, many times in very well done composites. And generally, if the sky is a little bit lighter right there, it's still gonna look realistic. So I wouldn't, you know, generally, you don't have to make sure you mask the sky. Like, even if I were to mask this, like, all the way down here, stuff like that, like, this doesn't even look anywhere near as realistic, right? It actually makes sense that it would kind of fade out. So you can actually unlink these layers come with linked with layer mask by default. You can hit this little chain link between them and then I can actually move my gradient up and down, right? So I can like figure out, okay, yeah, that's about where I want it. That looks pretty good. Okay, and then I can click on my sky layer and I can move this around as well and it's not going to move my layer mask. So remember, if those are linked, they're going to move together, right? You're gonna move the layer and the layer mask is going to move with it, right? If they're not linked, you can just move the layer. So you can hit Command T to transform it and things like that as well. All right, so here's one sky option for us. And it's not bad, but it's not, I don't think it's, I don't think it's there yet. All right, so let's look at a different sky option. Let's go ahead and bring this sky in. Now, I have already got a layer mask that works for me, right? I don't need to go around recreating layer masks over and over again. You can just copy them from one layer to another one. So hold this Alt or Option key and copy this layer mask from this layer over to that layer. There we go. And now we've got a new layer mask for that sky. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Alt or Option, we're gonna copy it over to that sky as well. So unlinking those, I can kind of move this around and say like, okay, is this going to work for us? Does this layer mask actually work for us? And it really doesn't look that bad. I mean, I, I don't mind how we've got the purple in there. But the thing that's kind of like getting to me now is like, it doesn't, it doesn't look real. It doesn't look like this purple sky would fade into the white, right? It kind of looks like maybe a blue sky would fade into the white or the lighter colors like that. But purple sky, you know, generally I'm gonna see that more where it's like fading into the yellows and oranges and things like that. So even if I were to like bring this up and things like that, you can see like, it just, it doesn't look natural. Not only that, but again, that like these colors that's not gonna be going on with the sky right now because it's not taken to the right time of day. So this is way more than just a Photoshop tutorial. I just wanna make sure you guys understand like the sky you use, the color of the sky, how high the camera is pointing up or down and where the location of the sun, that is all really important when it comes to compositing a sky into your image because if you get those things wrong, no matter what you do as far as blending, it's not gonna look right. Okay, let's go ahead and try our last one. Let's go ahead and pop that in we can see already that looks actually a lot better. We can see moving this, moving the sky around. It looks natural, like the sky, especially over here on the left, uh, it would like fade right into that lighter areas. So just turning this off and on, we can see basically all we're doing is adding that to our image. 
Now, let's say we wanted to like get this a little bit more kind of like, we, we want this to fit in with our image a little bit more. So I'm actually going to brighten this up a little bit. And you can do that with a curves adjustment layer. So let's just grab a curves adjustment layer. I'm going to hold Option, Command, and hit G. And that's going to clip this curves adjustment layer to this layer. So it's only going to affect the layer that we've got this actual uh, the sky on. All right, we're going to click right here in the middle. And I'm just going to kind of bring that up. And basically, what this does is just lightens the sky. So that's our next message is like, <laughs> our next message, this is a public service announcement. No, th that's the next kind of like important thing about the sky. Let's just turn this off and say like, okay, if the original sky was totally, totally white, like you're not going to get away with putting like a dark stormy sky in there because the sky lights the ground, right? Like it, it has to make sense that the ground is actually like all these nice highlights and stuff like that. You don't, it just would not work to put a dark image in there. So putting a sky like this, even though it was already pretty light to begin with, lightening it up a little bit, you can see actually like it goes one step further in making this a more believable. Like, okay, this light colored sky actually would lighten my image. Now there's a cool thing we can do here because you can see these birds, like our sky is covering up those birds a little bit. But I can actually change the layer mask of our sky to basically something like darken or multiply. Let's go to darken. And now these birds are not going to be covered up. Let's go to multiply and see how that works. All right, that works a little bit better. So basically now it's not covering up our birds and it's not covering up our subject. Let's just change that back to normal. Because in this case, it's actually lightening the birds because the birds are really dark, right? It's lightening the birds, it's lightening our hair. But changing this to multiply means it's gonna try to darken everything. And if this color in the sky is lighter than the thing it's trying to darken, it's not gonna do anything. In that case, this is our birds. So changing this to a multiply layer is a really easy way to have that just kind of blend in with everything else. All right, and this looks really good. So you can see the Photoshop in this episode was really simple and it should be simple. But the idea here is that you have to make sure you choose the right sky. So let's kind of choose the same ideas for these other ones and see if we can make them work. I think we can get them a little bit better, but I still think this is our winner. Now, actually, I'm gonna hit Command T on this and I'm all in favor of stretching out skies and things like that. There's, there's no real rules when it comes to skies, in my opinion, because they're, they're just blobs of color and cloud and stuff like that. So, you know, like obviously you don't want to just take a person's face and stretch that around. But if I hit Command T here and I decide, you know what, I want to stretch it out. And I want to put some clouds over there. I don't really mind that. It, it doesn't bother me because clouds sometimes are stretched out like that. So not a big deal there. All right, we're going to stretch that out. So let's see for these other layers. We're going to turn this one back on change this to multiply and you'll probably see like immediately what I was talking about that you're like, oh yeah, that totally does not work. Um, even if I were to go around changing the colors and things like that, even like how the clouds look, like the texture of the clouds, even if I, let's just go to like hue saturation, option command G is going to clip that. I'm going to go to colorize and then I can give this like a, like a blue color. Let's just change the saturation there. All right our saturation down. So even that, I've totally changed the color, but like the texture of the clouds doesn't really work because it's still like this, these are the cloud formations that you get at a sunrise or a sunset. All right, let's delete that and just say like, okay, that's a multiply layer and let's try to brighten it up a little bit, see if that's going to work. All right. So again, it looks a little bit better and in black and white, this might totally work, but these purples and yellows, they don't fade into white. That just doesn't happen in the sky. So you're going to have a really hard time making your audience believe that this was actually right. Let's even stretch this out so I can get rid of that. There's a tree here, so we're going to stretch that out. I just want to be sure I'm giving each of these an effort so you're like, okay, that actually does make sense. Other than, you know, I don't want to just be like, I give up on these. They're totally not going to work. All right, and then this guy, I think it's just, I, in my opinion, maybe you can make this a little bit more believable, but in my opinion, there's still too much detail in this sky. And you can definitely see there's a highlight and a shadow to these clouds. There we go. Let's just brighten that up and then change this layer down from normal to a multiply layer. So the highlight and the shadow in the clouds, it, it's a little bit more of an interesting sky than the other one on the top. But I don't think in this case it's as believable. Let's see if I like really stretched it out. Maybe you could, you know, do something like that. And that doesn't look horrible. All right, but I think in this case, it's still a little bit less believable than something like this. All right, let's make sure to turn that curves adjustment layer on. So there we go. There's our first 
it's cloud, you know, that doesn't look that bad. Um, the other thing you might want to keep in mind is, well, our subject's in focus. Our background is a little bit out of focus, right? So you don't want your clouds and sky to be in focus again. So if you use an image that is in focus, so if you're using a sky and it's nice and sharp, just make sure you go in and you add a blur to it. A nice Gaussian blur is really all it takes to just give that a little bit of a blur and make it make look like it's actually out of focus because obviously you can't play around with physics, right? You can't have a subject that's in focus and then mountains that are out of focus and then a sky behind that that's in focus again. That's just never going to look good. So if it's not already blurred, make sure you give it a little bit of blur and that's going to help it look a lot more realistic. All right, so big lessons here. Make sure the time of the day works for you. See, doesn't really work. Make sure the colors work for you as well and make sure basically the idea of like, you know, what type of sky it is from the, <laughs> from the sky texture you're using to the image, make sure all those things match. And then blending it should be just a really, really simple job of creating a layer mask and brightening it up a little bit if you need to. Guys, thanks so much for watching this episode. I hope it helped out. And the next time you go to add a sky into an image in Photoshop, just keep in mind, a lot of it's not so much how good of a masking job and things like that you do in Photoshop. A lot of it is choosing the right sky. And I hope this episode helped you choose the right sky next time you go to do this. All week long, we're going to be featuring images from fans and giving huge shout outs to some of our biggest Flurn fans. Thank you so much, guys. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can keep up to date with many more amazing episodes just like this one. Leave us a comment down below if you've got a new idea for a new episodes and be sure to share Flurn with every single person you know. Thanks again, guys, and I'll Flurn you later. Woo! All right. Did, is that it? Did we do it? All right.